Hello, everyone. Welcome to the IT Hour. Wow, it's Friday, October 20th, and this month is just flying by. But uh, we've got a great show for you today. There's so much going on. I'm really excited. Uh, I'm, by the way, I'm Becky Scott, head of community at Jump Cloud. Irvishi, our technical champion, is with us. Yes, she does her wonderful hello. Uh, and we've got a great, wonderful panel today. So much to do. Scott is back again. Hello, Scott. And Serge is back with us again. Yay. Uh, if you were on the webinar yesterday, you saw him. So two days in a row. And then Trevor, hello. Glad to have you here. Trevor's going to talk about a couple of different things, actually. So we've got a lot going on. We'll tell you more about that in a second. First, how's everybody doing? Got lots of smiles. I'm just throwing out some accusations against Scott in the chat. Oh, uh-oh. All right. He now. needs new friends. Are we all you have, Scott? Do you have other friends? Are you kidding me? These engineers at Jump Cloud, they are my people. Right. That's right. Good we to love, know. We love our people. Anybody doing anything fun this weekend? It's getting close to Halloween, but not quite yet. It is festival, festival season in India, so I'm assuming there's going to be lots of dinners and lunches and fun oh, visiting. So that's right. Yeah. We're having a we're having a Diwali. Um, festival here in my neighborhood so Diwali is next month there's another one before that that's mm -hmm. so yeah we've got lots of stuff lined yeah up yeah yeah those. well they, they do it here here in our neighborhood this this weekend so um yeah i think there's there's more but um yeah they're celebrating this weekend in our neighborhood and it'll be like literally right across from my house so i'll be able to hear all the music and see all the dancing and stuff so that'll be it'll be fun maybe go sneak some food i was just gonna recommend that glad mm -hmm. you Great minds think alike. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, also going to see the um, the Taylor Swift heiress movie tonight. A friend gave me tickets. So can't beat free tickets or something. So that'll be fun. I heard that they're all priced at 1989 as like a reference to her album. Oh, that that makes That's sense. That's somewhere, yeah. That makes sense. That's awesome. Rob is fighting my city since they refused to let me build a trebuchet in my front yard to launch candy at the trick or treaters. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess well, if you if it were a mini, yeah, if it were a mini trick or you know mini trebuchet, then maybe. I don't know about y'all, but um, I live in a neighborhood that goes all out for Halloween. Um, people come from all over to visit our neighborhood and I'm on the main, the main drag. And so we get literally hundreds of trick or treaters. I bought. Is it me or is Becky frozen? We lost Becky. She's Friday frozen. the 13th saved something. I'm just going to auto complete her <laughs> Halloween story. So. Everybody bought some decorations. And then and she was about to tell that she is the full person candy bar, I bet. Oh my God. <laughs> that, hmm. We're going to be all eating sweets, like Indian sweets, which are like 99% sugar and like 1% butter, ghee. So y'all have your candy and I will have mine. Let me just check on Becky. In the meantime, how is everybody else? What what plans do you all have? Sergey, I know I cut you off earlier. Fall Festival. Uh, we're going to have one at my church on Saturday. And then just, uh, I think, he rides and whatnot. So that's going to be enjoyable. And then we a relaxed the rest of the weekend. I never made it to like a pumpkin patch or anything like that. I'm sad. But my cousins went strawberry picking recently. And then they had to pay to pick the strawberries and then pay for the strawberries. And the, the person, like when they told me all this, I was like, hmm, sounds like people that don't need to go grocery shopping. Cause when you live alone, you have to go pick your strawberries from the grocery store. You have to pay for the product and for the experience for both of it. I know, right? Trevor, what are your plans? What are my plans? Oh gosh, I don't know. I'm going out to, uh, gonna watch the Tennessee Alabama game tomorrow. 
football game. So have that going and on. And egg. Good. Family fun. I think we've got a birthday party. We did the pumpkin patch last weekend, but uh, I've got a feeling that I'll be buying more pumpkins and uh, our activities, we hammer golf tees into them. So uh, that'll probably be probably be uh, the family fun activity tomorrow is hammering golf tees into pumpkins. That is an activity I did not know existed, but you learn something new every day. I love that. So while we wait for Becky, she says she has some internet issues. Um, I think she's back online in a bit. We can actually go over. I feel so like I've just, like this is a coup and I've thrown Becky out. I'm just taking over. Apologies all. That is not the intention. But uh, when she's back, we're going to go over this week's winner for um, I Make Work Happen. So we're doing weekly drawings of um, winners. And if you want to enter, it's really easy. We have a link that we share. Um, I'm just sending it now. And it's really easy to enter and you can just win some stuff. It's $100 gift cards weekly, I believe. And then afterwards, there is a $1,000 gift card. So I should do that. Um, here is the link, it's super easy. So we're going to talk about the winner. She's going to announce that. And then we are also going to do a draw for the Jump Lad University Advanced Certification. We're going to do a giveaway. So right now, the only eligible customers are paying customers. So we're going to put a link in the chat later on once uh, you know things are um, started a little bit more. And then you just have to put in your company email, your company name, your name, et cetera. And then we will do a random draw and you can have a chance at having your fee waived to get the advanced certification. Because when we did the session last time um, with the folks from Jumpstown University, there was some feedback that uh, I don't really want to pay again. So we're here to fix that for one lucky person today. And then we have product releases and announcements. And we've got a wonderful panel of product managers here today. We have Trevor, Sergi, and Scott, who are all going to be doing like mini like highlights of their featured products. I know the regulars have seen some of the stuff before, but we have suddenly had like a surge of um, of new people. So welcome everybody. So we're going to go over like little bits of that, and then in the show notes afterwards, we're going to include links to all of the full demos. So those are previous episodes of the IT Hour, and you can. You can get those in the show notes, which are on the community. All right. I am wondering if we should just start because I don't know where Becky is. She's trying, maybe do. Okay, got it. Okay, so we're going to wait for Becky for a bit. It's taking her a minute. So we'll just go through the community updates. So uh, for those of you who don't know, we have a community forum website where lots of stuff happens. So these are the highlights from this last week. We have a script um, from, I believe, it is Sean, one of our Jump Cloud scripting stars. Yes, it is from Sean. He has put a script in um, titled RDP to EC2 instances via Jump Cloud SSO. That sounds like a different language if you're not in the know, but uh, that's available. All of these links will be in the show notes. There's another one, a uh, best practices post. So best practice for admin level account with using Radius. I think that's a question that's in there. Um, somebody wants to know what your view is on their questions. So you can go in and answer those. I feel like these are questions that I can't answer as a technical champion because I'm not the person that's doing it. So if you are people that are doing it, you should go and answer those. We also have um, a question about the M365 email incident, which is EX682041 and the legal ramifications. That was Rob, I believe. I see you, Rob. And we have a script to find an application version less than the current version. That is something that I reposted from our Slack lounge. It was like a Q&A in the Slack lounge and somebody provided a script. So I've just reshared that in the forums. So we'll have all of those links, including the link to the community and the link to the Slack lounge in the show notes. Oh no, poor Becky. Just trying to get on her hotspot and it's not happening. Hmm.
I think. So there's a term in India, which is like similar to the evil eye, which is like if something too good happens and people are casting the evil eye on you. And I feel like that's what happened because we have all these new registrations and now Becky can't get in. Sad. In the meantime, let us announce the I Make Work Happen winner for this week. Can I get a drum roll, please? I don't even know if y'all can hear the drum roll, but it's Rob. Rob, you win. I know it seems like it's rigged, but I promise that it's not. Rob is one of our most regular attendees and one of the, you'll see him in the chat with the, the profile picture of his, one of his pet rats. So congrats, Rob. We will be in touch. Um, specifically, Becky will be in touch with your winnings. So congratulations. I will put the link into the advanced certification giveaway at a later time. Now moving on to product releases and announcements. Apple Business Manager terms update on October 24th, 2023. So mark your calendars, set a reminder, alarm, whatever you need to do. So it's important to set a reminder for Tuesday, October 24th, around 6 p.m. GMT, which is 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. India time, to accept these new terms and conditions by logging into your Apple Business Manager account as admin. If you don't accept the terms, this is a threat. If you don't accept the terms, new devices added to your Apple Business Manager account won't be auto-provisioned to Jumpout or any other MDM. And your license to licensing tokens for VPP will not function correctly. I repeat, October 24th. So set your reminders for that. Next up, we have a post um, getting to Mac OS 14 Sonoma using Jump Cloud patch policies by the world famous Tom Bridge. He has a post in the community. Jump Cloud can now help your devices along the process of upgrading to the latest version. Be aware. Turning this policy on and scoping it to devices will cause them to start to push out the upgrade to macOS Sonoma. So be sure you've scoped out the correct device groups before you hit save. So that is a warning and an announcement from Tom. Always a good combination of excitement and fear from Tom. All right, I think we should get started on the product panel because uh, we have a lot to go over today and it's already like 12 minutes in. So introducing everybody, Trevor. Hi, Trevor. How are you? Good. Happy to be here. You you will be talking about federation and dynamic groups. Yes, I will. So take it away. The stage is yours, and you can share your screen. Cool. And people, we can do questions in the chat while this is going. Yeah, so hey everybody, uh, happy to be back with you all again. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, both federation and then touch on dynamic groups as well. Um, and and just kind of as a heads up, I'm going to be talking pretty briefly about federation today as we're still um, kind of finishing out the functionality here. But I will totally be back in the future to talk about this um, much more in depth. But I'm going to go ahead and ha uh, happy to introduce it today and, and, and take questions as well. So. Federated authentication with an external identity provider. What does this actually mean? Basically, at Jump Cloud, historically, we have supported outbound uh, uh, single sign on. So basically, we provide single sign on with SAML and OIDC to downstream um, SaaS apps. Um, this is you know the Jump Cloud single sign on you all know and love. What we're doing um, is basically adding single sign on inbound into Jump Cloud. So you can bring an identity provider. Uh, like Okta or Google or Azure, and use those identity providers um, to be able to facilitate single sign-on from that upstream identity provider into Jump Cloud as a service provider. And then Jump Cloud can then basically turn it back into an identity provider and go do single sign-on into any downstream resources or get you into any other resources you might have. So basically, historically, downstream single sign-on, federation, upstream single sign-on into Jump Cloud. Um, so roughly what this will look like is in Jump Cloud, you can set up an identity provider. Um, we're going to start with Okta, but we'll be adding Google and Azure um, pretty soon. You set up an identity provider in Jump Cloud. And as you can kind of see up here, what this is basically going to look like to a user is they'll continue to sign in um, with Jump Cloud. But if we see that you have an identity provider configured, 
we're actually going to redirect you over to that identity provider um, using OIDC to authenticate the user. And then they're going to come back over and be able to, um, whether it's single uh, self-service account provisioning into their device or single sign-on out to downstream applications, getting a user portal, et cetera, any jump cloud uh, resource where you're using a uh, browser-based session, you'll be able to actually go sign in with these upstream identity providers and then jump cloud is brokering um, that authentication. Um, so again, you can keep your existing identity provider, let users sign in with that identity provider, but get into your um, device with self-service account provisioning, you get in the user portal, single uh, sign-on into the downstream um, applications, et cetera. So again, uh, this is, we're still finishing, uh, putting the finishing touches on this. Uh, we're gonna do a really limited um, closed beta right now with um, some, some incomplete kind of functionality for now, um, still getting this finished up. But later this year and looking into early next year, we're looking to be able to, to get this out and in the general availability. It's going to be a super simple setup. You basically come in, you give your identity provider a name, you provide your URL, client ID and client secret. This is using the auth code flow. And then you have an identity provider that is configured. Um, we're going to actually go to this IDP URL and using the well-known configuration, we'll grab all the uh, OIDC endpoints that we need to make the authentication happen. Um, and then you'll be set up to use Federate authentication. Um, so that being said, yeah, Brandon. Yeah, so you're using Jump Cloud, you're using Auth to sign into Jump Cloud. So for instance, if you're like like looking at self-service pro account provisioning, which I think Scott may have talked about in the past, when I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm a user and I'm getting a new laptop and I open it up and I click sign in with Jump Cloud, I open up, instead of signing directly into Jump Cloud with my Jump Cloud credentials, I'm actually getting redirected over to Okta, signing in with my Okta credentials, which then allows me to get into Jump Cloud and then get an account provisioned on my device. And you know, looking ahead, if you think of like, if I'm a user and I'm trying to do SSO into Salesforce, instead of signing in with Jump Cloud, I'm actually gonna get redirected over to Google or Azure, signing in with my Google or Azure credentials, come back to Jump Cloud and then get into my, uh, my application. What happens if there's not a matching identity on the identity provider end? Great question. Um, so you'll have one prerequisite is you'll have to have a user on both the jump cloud side and the identity provider side. So for instance, if you're using Azure AD or intra ID, you have to have the user already exist over there in that, uh, identity provider. And you also have to have the user exist on the jump cloud side, both Okta and Azure intra support scam real-time provision. So you can set that up to be able to create users in real time into jump cloud. Um, and then we do have uh, the user import with Google. But yeah, the prerequisite is they have to be on both ends to start with. We have to match up on a unique identifier. And this is really used um, to your question, Nick, to be able to keep your existing identity provider, um, but also use all of the great functionality in Jump Cloud. Or if you have certain places where you want users to sign in with an upstream um, identity provider, you can do that. How does this work in terms of local device passwords? Great question. Um, well, you'll have the ability to set up a local password um, on the device. We can use Windows Hello, so we can have a, a local pin on the device that never uses the device, but then use Federation to actually be able to provision that account for the first time and do self-service um, password and pin resets on Mac, of course. There's no Windows Hello or PIN available, but you will be able to have a local password on Mac. If you don't want the local password and you do want a Jump Cloud password to get synced down to the device, but users still to be able to sign in with an identity provider, we'll be able to support that as well. So again, that's gonna be more similar to what you've always known where you have a Jump Cloud password getting synced down to the device, uh, but users can sign in with an identity provider um, where possible. So obviously you're gonna have to have a credential on the device um, that can be either jump cloud managed with password sync or local without password sync, but then users can still sign in the user portal, do self-service password resets, et cetera, with, a, uh, with an external identity provider. All right, I'm gonna scroll up now. Sorry, I was taking the last questions first. There's one more, Trevor, sorry. Okay. Um, just putting it up on the screen now. What's the use case for external IDP if JC already access the IDP? 
Yeah. So in that case, Federation might not be for you. If you're totally happy and you don't, and you know, your use case wouldn't benefit from having an external identity provider, obviously totally cool to stay with Jump Cloud as the identity provider. We love it. Um, this is just giving you more flexibility if you're an organization that wants to let users continue to sign in with Okta or Google or Azure, but still um, use Jump Cloud as well um, for whether it's single sign-on, uh, device management, et cetera. So if you're happy with Jump Cloud as the identity provider, great, that, that's perfect, we love it. And if you would rather have users sign in with, with one of these providers, we're gonna be very soon supporting that as well. And we have one more. This one is fun, I think. Okay. With this double federated authentication between accounts, account A can sign into account B. Account B also has local users that only sign into account B. This cover federated authentication between accounts. Uh, no. If you're asking about being able to like sign in with multiple user accounts within the same Jump Cloud tenant, um, no. That wouldn't be covered under under at least this kind of our first pass at Federation. Um, definitely be interested to hear if you have a use case that would benefit from that. So if that's something like that you know of a use case, like please feel free to um, to, to hit me up. I can put my email um, in the chat when I'm done um, for any um, additional questions or feedback. But I'm interested to hear your case there. One thing we'd like to do in the longer term is be able to support Federation between Jump Cloud tenants. You're not seeing that on the screen yet. That's not kind of in our short-term plans, but it is in the longer-term plans to be able to allow like a user in one Jump Cloud org sign into another Jump Cloud org. Um, so I'm interested to hear your case of that happening um, within the same Jump Cloud tenant. Thank you. Give me on Jump Cloud Slack. Yeah, sounds good, Ross. Cool. Um, okay. That being said, so that's Federation again. Yeah, feel free to reach out on the Jump Cloud Lounge or email me directly with any questions. Um, but again, this is um, we're we're wrapping, we're putting the finishing touches on this right now. So you'll probably hear from me in a future IT hour to do a deeper dive once we have this all finished up and ready to go out. But with that being said, that is Federation, and I'm going to touch on dynamic groups really quickly. So you all heard about this from Derek a while back. Um, but just touching on dynamic groups quickly, for those of you that might have missed it, we now support in general availability, the ability to have both dynamic user groups and dynamic device groups. Um, so basically, in short, what this means is uh, our groups, user groups, and device groups, you can now add rules or conditions to these groups with many different attributes to be able to let users move in and out of these groups automatically without you needing to manually touch uh, the groups at all. So on the user group side, we have several different attributes here. Um, we also have exemptions. So if you have users that you know may meet one of these um, attribute conditions, but you don't actually want them in the group, or they don't meet the condition, but you always want them in the group, you can also add them to the exemption list as well. Um, and basically what that means is our rules engine will just totally ignore those users and they'll continue to be in the group or out of the group based on your preference. Um, that's dynamic user groups, um, several different attributes there. If you're a new Jump Cloud tenant, you're gonna see a default dynamic group get created for, for all users. That's gonna be set up like this. So every user in your org will always be in that group unless you add them to the exemption list. And then of course you can create all the custom groups you want with custom, um, with your own attribute conditions. Over on the dynamic group side, device group side, very similar to here too. We have several different attributes so you can set up dynamic device groups and let uh, devices move um, in and out of these groups accordingly. Um, again, we also have exemptions over here as well. So you can include and exclude from these groups um, as needed, um, but that is dynamic user and device groups. I'm happy to take questions here. All right, are there plans to add a contains operator? There are, yes. Um, that is in the works. Uh, we have a couple different um, additional operators that should be coming out. Um, so we'll keep you updated on the timeline there and what that looks like when that'll be in general availability, but that is absolutely, um, that is absolutely planned. ETA. <laughs> uh, Luke, you're asking the hard questions. Um, I don't have a, a, an ETA now, uh, but I will, again, we'll 
as soon as we have an, uh, a concrete ETA and when this when this will be available, I will update um, update the group ASAP. Whether it's um, getting that answer back out um, on the IT hour or or getting that update in Jet Club Lounge, etc. Yeah, exactly. Rob, the ETA is ETA. It's expected to be announced, but not quite yet. But yes, that is absolutely you're you're going to see that you're going to see that coming sooner rather than later. What's the migration scheme for those of us that have existing static group definitions? How do we upgrade? That is a great question. Um, well, do I dare go over and share my admin portal? Um, don't want to tempt the don't want to tempt the live demo gods, but the migration for an existing static group, and I'm guessing Jonathan that you're asking for groups that have um, existing group suggestions, but they're not fully dynamic. And if that is the case, um, you can keep you switch over to dynamic, and then you leave this box right here. Require administrator review of updates unchecked, and that is basically a fully now a fully dynamic group. So your rules will still be there, but you won't uh, have an admin have to go in and every single time check and accept or deny those suggestions. <laughs> That's right, Rob. Um, so Jonathan, hopefully that answers your question. If not, just just let me know in the chat. Are there plans to allow us to use? Bell or Ognal. Um, not yet. Um, right now, our rules engine is is just what you see here with um, using, um, assuming I'm, I'm understanding your, your question there, right, to use the attributes and operators that we offer here. Um, again, not to say that couldn't change in the future. So if you have a use case, like, please reach out in more detail so we can we can be tracking and understanding that. Can exclusions in dynamic groups be rules based as well? Never add a user with admin in description. Ooh, that is an interesting one. Um, that's a great question. Um, right now, we don't have plans to add that. It's on a specific user or a specific device basis, but basically having, having a rule that doesn't add them to the group, I'm assuming is what you're after there, yeah. Um, that's a good one. Um, so I can I can take that back to Derek and the team. Um, but yeah, I can say right now we don't have short term plans to add that. You, it's the exemptions are specific user or device based. But but I'm a uh, I can definitely take that as a future request for sure. And I see a couple different reactions there, so I'm assuming that that would help help several of you out as well. So I'm definitely I have one that more back. point of feedback. Please add ability to ref reference other groups. Um, so actually being able, I don't, so I don't know if this is what you're asking or not, but I know one thing we're looking at doing is being able to link together user and device groups dynamically. Um, so that is, that's in, we have plans to do that. Um, if you're looking for something else here, oh, okay, maybe you're saying like, if they're in this group, also add them to this group. So if they're in group A, add to group B. Um, yeah, that's a super interesting one. Um, and if that's what you're after, I can say that you could accomplish that now on a workaround basis by obviously just having the same attributes um, conditions set up. Um, but I'm assuming you're looking for something a bit more robust there. So that's that's a good one. Um, yeah, I can, I can totally take that back. We don't have short term plans to do that, um, but to totally take that back. I mean, I can do, let me just pause and say, like, I'm super pumped to hear hear the, the questions and, and requests here because, you know, Dynamic Groups just released here over the last couple months. And I know that we're already getting a ton of feedback, wanting wanting more features and more robustness here, which makes me super pumped to hear that, that you all are, are interested in, in getting more functionality there. So I'm hoping that the Dynamic Groups have been super beneficial for you all. Um, there's not contains operator with that work. Yeah, maybe so that might that might help out with uh, with the exemptions. Um, not move again. I mean, they has they haven't been flexible enough. Okay, yeah, Luke, happy to if you want to if you want to give me more details in chat or reach out separately. I'm happy to hear again if you have any specific requests for what you would need to be added to make dynamic groups flexible enough for your use case. I'm happy to hear that. Is there a way to have nested groups or is that coming? No plans to add nested groups right now. For now, um, being able to accomplish what you would want with nested groups. Um, would have to be facilitated through dynamic group rules. 
Um, but again, as always, like I know we get requests for nested groups, something we're constantly evaluating. Right now we're looking at kind of solving that problem through dynamic groups as opposed to nested groups. But again, as always, like happy to hear the use case and try to understand if there's a there's a need there. As someone also, who came from a prior work. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I'm gonna put a link in here to submit a feature request. Like to, it's a guide to submit feature requests. So put those in, sorry, continue Trevor. Awesome, no, no, yeah, totally. Thank you for that, yeah. No, I was gonna say, someone who came from a pri prior organization with a on-prem AD uh, deployment that had hundreds of thousands of, of users and you can, it's like we, our nested group structure there was just wild. So hearing nested groups kind of gives me the, I get a little bit shaky when I hear that, but I know that that's totally, um, I know there's totally a valid case there. So yeah, for sure, like let us know, if, keep letting us know if there's demand there for nested groups. If no nested groups and let us copy an existing group, absolutely, yeah, for sure. Um, that's that's a great one. Um, and that would, I know, like help you all to be able to, you know, configure some pretty complex rule conditions and be able to, to drop those onto new groups. Okay. Seems like it's slowing down a bit, and I don't want to take up. I want to give plenty of time for the uh, the other folks here. Um, so I am going to stop sharing now. I'll continue to look at the chat and make sure I didn't miss anything. So if there's anything else, please reach out there or you know hit me up in the Jump Club Lounge, etc. Thanks, y'all. Yes, you can keep popping the questions in the chat, um, and I will pass those on to Trevor. Up next, we have Sergi talking about Android. Stage is yeah. Open. And thank you, thank Trevor. Thank you. Good job, Trevor. There. Awesome. Okay, let me share my screen. And I think we're up and rolling. So, hey, everyone. Sergio Bellis here, Principal Product Manager for Mobility. I want to do a very, very quick overview of where we are in our Android EMM journey and really focus the bulk of my discussion today on the things that we announced in our uh, press release, as well as the aspect that we alluded to in terms of coming soon. So just a little bit of a disclaimer, but at a high level, right? Uh, Android EMM offers a ton of flexibility. We started off evaluating which ones would be most pertinent to our customers, whether you're on the very privacy conscientious side with BYOD or really on a control, fully managed, lock it down to explicitly your use case, their fully managed device or a dedicated device. Well. With phase one, which went GA in about June, uh, we launched work profile. So that's your BYOD and corporate use cases. We built a, a ton of policies that followed a lot of commands associated with it. You can actually drive device compliance through that as well as a fairly robust uh, application management approach. However, customers were eager to see that and were asking for more. So that's where our phase two came about. So from there, uh, really, we honed in on the other two uh, management modes that's dedicated and fully managed. So there's different use cases that fall into this umbrella. Typically, if you're a knowledge-based worker with a company-issued device, or if it's a device that may be specific for uh, unique use cases, digital signage, kiosks, whatnot, that's where this conversation comes into play very effectively. So we ended up supporting uh, these two enrollment or management modes uh, through the QR code enrollment. And with that, there was a accompanying of a ton of policies. So a number of our policies were enhanced. So your device level restrictions, app level restrictions were enhanced and that new ones were completely built. So kiosk mode, battery mode really tailored towards our dedicated devices, factor recent protections for any company owned devices as well as a number of networking configurations and restrictions policies. With that, we needed to actually expand what that looks like for an admin in their configuration experience. So uh, you will see something evolving in the Google tab. So you will see now you can enable and select the fully managed and dedicated devices for those enrollments. You will have insights into the Android fleet that you have. And with a soon coming release, we have an enhanced enrollment token or the QR code creation process. I'll allude to that in a second. And with this expansive uh, UI, we are also incorporating zero touch. So uh, a number of the enrollment token enhancements came about based on customer feedback. So uh, some of you were letting us know that we are currently making very hard coded decisions for you. It's a set limit of expiry. I can't really 
uh, use it as efficiently for my use cases, I'd love to see some granularity. So with that, we are actually introducing the ability for you to curate that enrollment for your use case, whether that's single use, multi-use, how long you need it to be uh, valid for before it expires. Is it a zero touch enrollment token? Um, or is it a general fully managed uh, actual device enrollment token? And a little bit of a effort there is, well, if I'm enrolling manually a couple of devices, I'd love to be able to have a corporate Wi-Fi network actually built into that QR code. So I don't have to keep re-entering the SSID and the password. So we are delivering that. And you'll be able to experience that here very, very shortly. With that, some of the policies to highlight software update. You will now be able to define for company-owned devices the ability to, uh, when those uh, updates kick into effect, if there are maintenance windows or freeze periods that are respected. And with some of the notions of using dedicated devices, kiosk mode. So you are now able to either define into a single app mode or into what would be called a launcher experience where you can define a number of applications along with those corresponding restrictions. The thing that you may have seen in the press releases coming here in this quarter is Android Zero Touch Enrollment. So uh, a number of you may have experienced Zero Touch Enrollment or similar experiences with uh, Apple or ABM. Uh, this is a sort of a Google reflection of that. So there are some unique requirements that Google has in place. One, there's some OS level restrictions you have to be aware of. Uh, you have to have a EMM provider configured that supports fully managed and dedicated devices for that process, as well as you will have to procure those devices through a authorized Google reseller. There's a particular flow you have to follow, but once you have that in place and you've checked off all those boxes, you're streamlining that uh, onboarding experience for each of your end users. So this is sort of the process we call out that you have to make sure you're, you gotta go through all these steps accordingly. You'll purchase through a reseller. We have links accordingly in our documentation to all the uh, gold, silver uh, rated Google resellers. Once those devices are procured, there will be a, a customer account that will be generated for you in a zero touch portal you will associate that portal in our JumpCloud MM tenant, and then you'll be able to define some of those configurations using those uh, enrollment token configuration that we I alluded to previously. So um, just to showcase a slight demo, what that looks like in real life. So this is a staging environment to showcase it. Uh, the experience, historically, you may have seen just an ability to select either a company owned uh, work profile experience, and you would click on this and it would generate you a QR code. Now you're actually able to clarify that a little bit more specifically. So if you wanted to just generate a typical one, so we'll just do a test one. We'll just a single use token. We won't specify Wi-Fi. You click create. We spin up that QR code. We have that token if you happen to not have the ability to use a camera on your device and you'll be able to click on this and you can even go through the process of downloading it. If you are trying to generate it for zero touch, just flag that accordingly, uh, specify the information. When we generate that particular token, we'll give you a couple of things. One, you have the ability to copy that uh, DPC extra blob, that JSON format, the information, just grab it and go and put it into the zero touch portal. Or if you don't have the ability to do that at the moment, you want to download it for future use, go ahead and grab it, save it. And according to however you named it, we'll uh, save that particular JSON file for you. At that point, because we're generating a number of these tokens and they may be a long lived period, we are actually surfacing up those tokens for you. You have the full capacity to be able to delete them. If you so desire, you can minimal, minimize how many active tokens should you need to cycle those out. And once you have an accordingly JSON blob, you hop into the zero touch portal and are able to configure that and get your devices bulk onboarded. It's really the high level uh, presentation for myself. Any particular questions, comments, happy to take those away for you guys. Let's see those questions, friends. Thank you, Sergi. There is also a longer, deeper dive into this, which we will link in the show notes. So we're gonna pause for questions. Going once, going twice. All right, Sergi was super thorough, I think. 
you've already answered everyone's possible questions. And if something Thank comes about that. later, help holler at us, android at junkcloud.com or on the community forums, and we'll get back to you. Kalisa has no questions yet. I'm just excited to do more with Android now. So that's good feedback. And now the fireworks. <laughs> I accidentally set this off in a customer meeting once. It was awkward. All right. Scott is not waiting for me to announce him before sharing his screen, but he is a go-getter. This is how he gets stuff done. So it's all yours, Scott. Take it away. Awesome. Um, so back to talk about Jump Cloud Go, and I want to show what's new. Um, most ex The thing I'm most excited about is our new um, solutions page. So this is the solutions page that highlights um, this amazing capability. On this page, not only can you find um, some overviews, a video of how this gets configured, um, there's also access to the, the Jump Club Go feature brief, which can be a great uh, asset to share if you're looking to dig into the details and understand um, more about Jump Cloud Go um, and, and share that with others. So uh, what the heck is it? Um, seeing is believing. And uh, let's, let's play a real world scenario, which is I'm Scott. I work at a company called Jump Cloud. We use this platform called Jump Cloud and Jump Cloud is how I securely authenticate to the resources I use to get work done. One of those key resources is the Jump Cloud community. Um, so this will be demonstrating a uh, natural um, SP initiated flow to a Jump Cloud protected web resource. So I'm a Jump Cloud employee, so I click here to get here. And wow, look at this. Let's click again to log in with Jump Cloud Go, put my finger on my uh, Touch ID authenticator on my Mac, and uh, here I am. I am now ready to make work happen. That is my authentication experience for the day. Um, how did that all happen? That all happened with the immense amount of effort and work that's gone into this incredible solution that is Jump Cloud Go. Um, and as the solution brief calls out, this is kind of this amazing feature that's at the intersection of productivity and security, where we're using a hardware-backed token stored inside the um, secure enclave on my Mac OS device to uh, get me to my resources without me having to enter a password. Um, thinking about where this fits in terms of, you know, your world as a user, as a human, right? We think about our, our security online. And uh, as we've evolved with technology, we remember the days of entering just a password to get to our resources. That then evolved into um, two-factor where we we're getting codes on our phones that, that let people know that those services, we had our phones, we put the code in so that people couldn't hack us. And now we've evolved in some really powerful flows that involve those push authentication where we get pushes on our watches to approve. What's at the top of this model? Well, you just saw it, it's passwordless. It's the idea that your uh, security is tied directly to your identity and your physical work computer and having access to that being signed into your work account and your work computer is what gives you the highest authenticator assurance to get you to your resource. So there's nothing more powerful on top of that than to throw in the inheritance factor, you are who you are, so that your fingerprint is what gets you there. So Jump Cloud Go is us realizing the power of this incredible Jump Cloud platform. It is certainly um, to protect and manage right now SSO applications. And uh, the whole idea is that this is what you get with an all-in-one platform that does device, identity, single sign-on, um, and access management. So again, uh, Jump Cloud Go, the, the best place to dig into it's on the website. And if you're curious where this lives inside your admin portal, go ahead and sign in here and I'll show you where that lives. In the demo gods. Inside the admin portal, Jump Cloud Go is enabled for all new accounts. Um, all existing accounts have to first turn the feature on. Um, so where this feature lives for existing accounts that might not have it enabled is on the features tab. Um, once the feature is enabled, the way that we interact with the computer and the browser is through a browser extension. This is analogous to the Windows accounts extension that Microsoft uses for the primary refresh token. And you'll see right now we have the Chrome web extension. I'm um, currently in development are uh, adding full support for Edge and Brave. Um, they'll use the same Chrome extension and we're developing two new extensions, one for Firefox and one for Safari. The way you can deploy this extension, it's up to you. Um, with a powerful platform, as we talked about with Federation, we are all about understanding that you use other tools, um, other uh, workforce productivity suites. So you're welcome to use Jump Cloud and our policies to deploy this extension. Or if you're a Google shop, I highly recommend using Chrome Browser Cloud Management 
as this really is a better together story between Jump Cloud and Google, as we can enforce enrollment into Chrome Browser Cloud Management, and then you can gain all of the power of managing the Chrome Browser inside of this uh, free to use tool. Um, doesn't actually require that you have a Google Workspaces paid account. So really, really excited about our better together story with Chrome Browser Cloud Management. And then once it's there, we have this browser extension. Highlight some of the new capabilities of the browser extension. You'll see right now that I'm on an open tab. If I click this, this now opens a new tab and brings me to the user portal. If I happen to be in an empty tab and there's nothing that I'm highlighted on, I'm just in the new tab space and I click it, it'll populate that new tab space with the user portal. So I have a new behavior as a user using the Jump Cloud that is uh, I'm constantly clicking on this to get to my user assets. And this is actually how I get to the admin portal now too, as you can get to the admin portal with just a click. Um, so other browsers being released, ETA for Jump Cloud Go. Um, I can tell you, um, I would say by the end of Q1 next year is the most pessimistic estimate I have. The most optimistic estimate is to get it out to you before the end of the year. So I want to give you some boundaries on those pessimistic and optimistic estimates. Um, and again, right now, the, the Jump Cloud Go browser for Chromium-based, it can be installed, but it's in an unsupported capacity. Uh, I want to make sure that we run it through all the tests, but uh, I've had a number of users pop up inside of the lounge saying, hey, the Jump Cloud Go browser extension works on Edge. Um, it also works inside of Brave. Awesome. Um, totally understand that it works, but we want to make sure that we get it fully supported. And in addition to making it fully supported, we will also be giving you information on how to deploy it. Every application is its own beast in terms of management. So Chrome is a fully managed enterprise browser, browser as highlighted by Chrome Browser Cloud Management. Um, Edge also has some management controls as it's Chromium management. But understand when we get into the Firefox and Safari land, there may be different methods that are uh, the roads to getting the browser extension installed. Um, we've got an open feature request with Safari to help us get managed extensions in there as an MDM vendor. But right now, all Safari extensions are user-led installs where the user is adding the extension to their browser. So that's what I've got. I'm super excited to share these resources. I've highlighted what's new. And again, uh, just as a user using it, one of the, my uh, Easter eggs or something that I do as a new behavior that's saving me a ton of time is just getting used to clicking on this to get to the user portal so I can get to my resources with a single click. This also makes URL bookmarks potentially a lot more useful for your organization. So understand that this is a portal that if you're not using us for SSO, there's value to be had with Jump Cloud Go, giving easy access to uh, potentially company resources or a homepage. Um, a lot of fun stuff that you can uh, create and bring to your organization with Jump Cloud Go um, now that it's just a more seamless access way to get to the user portal and uh, get to those uh, precious resources inside of it. Oh, hey, Kelly. How are you, Kelly? I see you there. Um, also highlight, super excited. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feedback on the new macOS login window, want to shout out Kelly. Um, she was a huge help in uh, refining that at the Mac Admins Conference in Penn State. So super excited to uh, take her feedback, build that into the product. And that's what we're here for. We're here to listen. So any questions, comments, concerns, um, this platform, we are stewards uh, building it for uh, our prospects and customers. So we are we are here to help. I think you are muted for me. I am not hearing you. Do you hear me now? No, we can't, yes. Okay, excellent. So Becky is uh, still trying to get back in. Today, is, we have all the Halloween curses on us today because my headphones died. Then I was accidentally muted. Becky's internet has decided to take a leave of absence. But thank you, Scott. Uh, we do have a deeper dive in Jump Cloud Go. We'll put the link in the show notes so you can check that out. And now for the next giveaway, we have... Wait, I'm just trying to make sure we don't have any other questions. I think we're good. If you do have more questions, you can just put them in the chat and we'll get them over to Scott at a later time. 
Okay, so if you would like to have your certification fee waived for the advanced certification, you can enter in this Google form that I have just put in the chat. So we're going to give it five minutes. It's uh, 10 minutes to the hour now, so we're going to give it five minutes for you all to put that in while I read the news. And once we've got those in, I will do a random drawing and one person will get their, oh no, we'll get their fee waived. Hi, Becky. All right, I see those coming in. So we're gonna give that a few minutes. In the meantime, to the news. Legos, you're gonna get something more expensive than Legos, Becca. You're gonna get your advanced certification fee waived. So I think that would be cool, but we should do another giveaway for Legos. All right, coming in with the IT news. <laughs> I love these CISA updates. Threat actors exploit Atlassian Confluence. CVE 2023-22515 for initial access to networks. So the CISA, FBI, and the MSISAC are releasing a joint statement um, in response to the active exploitation of CVE 2023-22515. Um, this recently disclosed vulnerability affects certain versions of Atlassian, Confluence, Data Center, and Server, enabling malicious cyber threat actors to obtain initial access to Confluence instances by creating unauthorized Confluence administrator accounts. Yay! Threat actors exploited this as a zero day to obtain access to victim systems and continue active exploitation post-patch. Atlassian has rated this vulnerability as critical, CISA, FBI, and MSISAC expect widespread continued exploitation <laughs> due to the ease of exploitation. So install your patches, everybody, if you're using Confluence slash Atlassian products, which is basically everyone. Moving on to more hacking news. Hackers exploit zero day to compromise tens of thousands of Cisco devices. <laughs> Cisco on Monday issued an advisory warning that a critically rated vulnerability in iOS XE, the software that powers the company's range of networking devices, was being actively exploited by hackers. Cisco said the bug was found in the web administration interface, which can be exploited when an affected device is exposed to the internet. The list of devices running Cisco iOS XE software include enterprise switches, wireless controllers, access points, and industrial routers which corporations and smaller organizations use to manage their network security. So if you're using any of those things, batch that up also. Taking a quick break to look at the certification giveaway entries. All right. Uh, we have like two more minutes for anyone that wants to enter. I'm just gonna post the link here again. Two more minutes. Random winner gets to have their fee waived for the advanced certification. As a reminder, all of the learning, um, all of the courses, all of that is free. You're only going to pay for the actual certification. So I'm giving that two more minutes. And now, uh, in slightly better news, Android will now scan sideloaded apps for malware at install time. So Google Play's malware system called Google Play Protect has always been able to check sideloaded apps for malware, but it used faster techniques, faster techniques, and it happened quietly in the background. The new technique will delay your app installation with a full screen scanning interface while Google runs a deep scan of the app code. Google's blog post says that this is real-time scanning at the code level to combat novel malicious apps, and that Google Play Protect can um, recommend a real-time app scan when installing apps that have never been scanned before to help detect emerging threats. So, haha, take that, malicious threats. And finally, this one is gonna cause some trouble. The IRS is gonna start piloting its free TurboTax alternative next year. So, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh, poor TurboTax. So it looks like the IRS was truly working on a free TurboTax alternative, like earlier reports had claimed. The U.S. Tax Authority said has announced that it will start pilot testing its new direct file program for the 2024 filing season, but initially available only in 13 states. And it's only going to do federal tax returns. It won't be able to do 
data done. So, hey, save some money this tax season. Okay, perfect, on time. I am now closing the giveaway form in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so we were supposed to be tag teaming this draw, but since Becky's internet has rage quit on us all, y'all are just gonna have to wait while I do this manually. Somebody make some small talk, quick. Sergi, tell us about your life. Actually, while you're drawing it, I just wanna throw one more thing out. Uh, for those that yeah, weren't good. in the webinar yesterday, uh, Tom Bridge, Myself and Becky had the awesome opportunity to talk about the late 2023 Apple releases that covered Mac OS Sonoma and iOS, iPad OS 17. Uh, so feel free to take a look at that. There's a ton of new consumer grade features uh, that we highlighted, right? We talked about the supported hardware on uh, that will run Mac OS 14. We talked about this new screensavers, Safari profiles, the cool camera options with that let us do stuff like this, right? And alluded to some of the other features that are coming in the future. I ran through a plethora of iOS 17 features, whether that's contact poster, messages improvements, you know, the, the safety feature called check-in, some long overdue things like uh, offline maps, as well as we highlighted some things that are coming in the future, journal, the new application that Apple's introducing. And we alluded to some of the new management capabilities. One is there's a, uh, a reinvigorated focus on managed Apple ID, some of the changes that will be coming with federating uh, managed Apple IDs, uh, building off of managed Apple IDs, the ability to now uh, do account driven device enrollment. So there's a workflow to be to be able to address there, some system setting restrictions, some new cool network relays, as well as a question that we pose to the audience about watch os management so there's a couple of interesting requirements a supervised ios device and apple watch and software that's intended to run on both so we'd love to hear from this community and the broader jump cloud community uh what type of use cases are you thinking so that we can sort of account for that in our longer term roadmap excellent thank you sergi for perfectly filling that amount of time that i needed to do my random draw and some other background checking so um, I don't know if you all saw the headline at the top of the form, but only paying customers are eligible at this time. That being said, we have a winner. Um, Becky, do I have the green light to announce the winner? I know you're listening and in the chat. I need the blessing of the manager before I do this. I don't want to get in trouble giving away free things on a live stream. Becky, oh no, I hope our internet hasn't failed even further. But yes, with only two minutes left, YOLO, thank you, Scott. <laughs> okay, the winner of the waived advanced certification that was very badly phrased, but drum roll, the winner is Stuart Phipps from Zip Solutions. Congratulations, Stuart. We will be in touch. Yes, Sergi. Wait, I want to do. Oh, I did something accidentally. Can we? Can I do lasers? This is a professional cast, you guys. But yes, congratulations, Stuart. We will be in touch with you about whatever coupon code or other magic is going to enable this. Um. All right. That is all that we have for today. Next week, we have, I'm going to speak very slowly until this loads. Next week, I, yeah, what, what day is it? 27th next week. I don't know what's happening next week, you guys. I was not prepared for this. I was not prepared to host, but um, yes. We will have the, the registration link up. We'll have the live stream set up on YouTube. So you can go and check that out as soon as we have it up and ready. Thank you all for joining. Um, it's so good to see all of you. Thank you, Trevor, Sergi, and Scott. 
for those wonderful demos. And I will, I intentionally stay on an Intel Mac. Oh, there's some side conversation going on about all OSs matter. Cool, got it. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful Friday and a good weekend, and we'll see you next time.